Hello and welcome to the presentation of two-dimensional probabilistic slope stability analysis of the Fundao Dam, uh, done for Geo Niagara 2021. I, my name is Murray Fredlin. I'm doing this presentation on behalf of Linda and Professor Jitarana from University of Guyana in, in uh, Guyana, Brazil. So let's get started with this presentation. Just to give you a little bit of background on this topic, we often focus on deterministic analyses of sites and we calculate a factor of safety and we assume that the factor of safety, of course, must be higher than one and must produce a safe condition, which we interpret to be either 1.3 or 1.5. Um, however, uh, this, this approach has certain certain drawbacks in that we really don't have when we have a factor safety of 1.3 or 1.5 a clear understanding of what the risk we are exposed to under that approach. Um, the example is shown in the figure here of a two different scenarios where we have variation accounted for and therefore we have a, a bell distribution of the factor of safety. And in the first in the first scenario, we have a higher average factor of safety of about 1.5, but more variability. And in the other example, we have a lower factor of safety of 1.2, but less variability accounted for. And what's interesting in this example, and this is just a theoretical example, but the probability of failure is actually higher in the the scenario where the factor of safety is 1.5, just because of the variability that's accounted for in the analysis. So just having a higher factor of safety does not always relate to a lower probability of failure is what this example is trying to bring out. So we are trying to illustrate in this paper the uh, a probabilistic approach to particularly the, the Fundao Dam. And this was work performed at the University of Guyana, as I mentioned. The Just a little bit of background on the, the Fundao Dam. It was constructed with the upstream method. Uh, there's a history of drainage issue, issues if you read through the reports. A blanket drain was installed in as part of the construction partway up through the material. That can be seen in the cross-section figure here. So there is a, there's a starter dam rock fill against the face. There's another dike installed upstream, dike 1A, and then we have tailings in the middle and blanket trains, and then upstream construction at the site. And if we look at a uh, plan view of the dam pre-failure, here is, uh, we see a setback. Number one, I would just bring your attention to that goes through the center of the dam that was installed largely to uh, lower the factor or lower the the increase the safety of the dam and that in those particular cross sections and the cross sections shown are the cross sections that were analyzed by the expert panel uh, post failure and there are quite a few cross sections analyzed there we're going to focus on just two cross sections that are outlined in black uh, cross section 01 which goes along uh, the right-hand side, if you're looking upstream towards the dam, and AA, which is on the left side. So, if we pull out those two cross sections, so we'll look downstream on the earth dam, section AA on the right abutment, looking downstream, and you can see the cross section there, there's uh, largely loose sand tailings, and some slimes material, and you see the location of the original ground. Section 01 on the left abutment, where the offset is, you can see the, the mapped location of the slimes and the loose sand tailings. And these are your typical cross sections as presented for those particular locations and presented originally by Morgenstern and the expert panel in 2016. So for the methodology, as this is a subsequent follow-up study, the original report, expert panel report, did not consider probability in the in the analysis. So that's this report is looking at the probabilistic analysis of this for uh, really a follow-up academic interest. So the original materials 
Uh, the material properties used for the site were taken out of the expert panel report published in 2016. And you can see the different uh, region properties that are outlined here. Foundation is quite competent material. And then there's a mixture of compacted sand tailings, loose sand tailings, and some slimes material. And the loose sand tailings and slimes are represented uh, as well as properties there for undrained shear strength in the material. So to gather the uncertainty, there were not material properties published in the expert panel report for uh, to account for variation in the material properties that is reasonable. So a literature re review was done by Professor Generata to determine what are typical variations, coefficient of variations for different types of materials that would apply at the site. And here you can see listed the different types of materials and what the parameter is and what the variation might be and the, the reference for that published variation. So a lit the literature review showed that uh, where we're getting some of the properties here. And then the, at the far right hand side of this chart, we see the probability density function that is assumed as largely either log normal or normal. So, and then as well, typical material spatial parameter uncertainty for, um, for undrained materials is shown here and the reference as well as given for these materials. So certain uh, properties were adopted here, which are shown in this table for the different materials involved in the cross section and coefficients of variation and the probability density function was that was used as shown here. And uh, the, the spatial variability was only defined for the angle of friction, some just some of the restrictions of the study. There was a horizontal or autocorrelation diff distance of 30.8 meters, a vertical autocorrelation distance of 1.98 meters. So spatial variation was accounted for in the analysis. The Morganston price method of slices was used for the analysis as well. The alternate point estimate method was utilized for the, the variational analysis as well as the Monte Carlo method in the, in the analysis. So this is just defining the parameters that we used. So on the left section, which is section 01, uh, if we use the, the mean values of the input parameters, you can see for the factor of safety calculated for both drain conditions and undrained conditions and the resulting location of the factor of safety. So for drain conditions, we have a factor of safety of 2.689. For undrained conditions, we have a factor of safety of 1.554. So still, still quite high and certainly in safe conditions. So for if we perform the analysis for section 01 and do a, a probabilistic analysis, then this just shows the average factor of safety for undrained and drained for both the methods of alternate point estimate method and the Monte Carlo method. And we can see we have high uh, average factors of safety when average parameters are used. And then you can see on the right hand side of the chart, the probability of failure in terms of percent for both normally and log normal distributions assumed. And the upper part of the chart is with spatial variability accounted for and the bottom part of the chart is with not count accounting for spatial variability. So in this we see very low probabilities of failure in all cases here, extremely small values. And for the left section, probability of failure is quite low rather I should say. So when we do an alternate point estimate method analysis, what we can determine is a tornado diagram, which what the method does is it varies all the individual parameters by two standard deviations. And then you see the impact on the factor of safety of each variation. So in other words, what we're looking for is, is it possible reasonably to vary each parameter and have it impact the factor of safety in a significant way. So on the bottom of these, each graph, 
uh, B and C is the factor of safety plotted. And uh, then each material that is varied is shown and the most varying parameter is shown at the very top. So we can see from uh, graph B that the compacted tailings friction angle has the highest ability to vary the factor of safety. However, that being said, factor of safety varies, uh, you know, is, is, is smaller than between 2.8 and 2.9, so a very high factor of safety. So the variability matters uh, not very much. On the right-hand side, we have the undrained scenario, and you can see that the loose sand tailings, our R parameter, has the ability to vary the material, the factor of safety, quite more, uh, a lot more significantly between approximately 1.4 and uh, up above 1.8. So that's the highest parameter that has a, the ability to vary the, the factor of safety. And we start to get an idea for what is the variability for these parameters. So if we look now and we transition over to section AA, we're looking at just using the first the mean value of the input parameters. If we put in for drained conditions, we get a factor of safety of 1.9. And if we look at undrained conditions, we have a factor of safety of about 1.048, uh, so approximately one even. And if we look at the analysis results, here's a table summarizing everything. Uh, we can see Again, for the average factors of safety, they are, um, they are quite high for drained conditions. For undrained conditions, they drop to around very close to failure. And for the, then the resulting probability of failures, when we account for variability, the, for drained conditions, the probabilities are quite negligible. But for undrained conditions, we have probabilities of failure uh, roughly between 22 and up to 29, 30%, uh, given what method we use for, um, you know, whether we use APM or Monte Carlo. But the, the results are pretty consistent still between APM and Monte Carlo in, in that range that was mentioned there. So we are starting to see a higher, a higher probability of failure that is indicating that uh, there may be a problem. And in... If we plot the resulting tornado diagrams out of the APEM method, what we can see both for the top, the, the drained condition, and then the bottom B is the undrained, uh, we can see that the, the drained condition, the, the, the friction angle of the upper material, fundacio material, friction angle has the, the biggest ability to change the factor of safety, but we are still varying it between approximately 1.83 and up to about 2.0 in terms of factor of safety. So even though there's a little bit of variance there, we still have a higher factor of safety. On the undrained, however, the loose sand tailings has the potential to throw us below 1.0 which is giving us our, our higher probability of failure in the 20 to 30% range. And so we can see the controlling, we can see two things. We can see the controlling parameter that is controlling our fact, our probability of failure. And uh, we can see which parameter is the most controlling of, in this analysis and has the highest degree of ability to, to uh, affect our probability of failure. And just to discuss this and to put this in context, this is a standard chart that shows our tolerance as a society to risk for different types of structures, in, including you see there uh, foundations, um, earth dams, commercial aviation. And you can see on the, on the vertical axis, the, the frequency of natural events or failures. And then on the bottom, the bottom part of the chart is the consequence of these events and failures. And what we're seeing is if we analyze in terms of undrained, uh, undrained conditions, or sorry, section, if we analyze in section 01 of undrained conditions, we see that the, the green areas plot below the accepted risk level, which is reasonable for this structure. However, if we plot section AA, in the undrained conditions, we see that um, the pink areas plot 
high above our accepted risk and indicate a total uh, highly risky concert or high, high amount of risk for the event and uh, a significant consequence as well. So that's in a zone where we would rather not be and is consistent with the failure conditions. So in this case, the anal analysis by Section AA and undrained conditions appears to represent the scenario that, that uh, failed in hindsight uh, better than the uh, Section 01. You can see the difference in the spatial location between where you analyze the potential failure issues. So in terms of concluding remarks, we'll just summarize that uh, probability of failure uh, and risk levels are highly dependent upon the hypotheses regarding drainage conditions. Uh, spatial variability should be considered for a more a representative statistical distribution of the material conditions that we should, in other words, we should account for potential spatial variability. And the, the problem uncertainty is dominated by the friction angle and undrained shear strength of the sandy tailings. So that's your critical parameter is what comes out of this that has the ability to very much influence the, the analysis. Risk levels range from acceptable to unreasonably high levels that are similar to certain natural events is what we see here. And much of the high risk is intrinsically related to the upstream method of construction, which is fairly obvious here. So thank you so much for your time. I've appreciated doing the presentation and thank you.